The Tokyo release of ServiceNow is finally available for developer instances, and with it comes a bunch of amazing new features and updates. I'm Nathan Firth with New Rocket, and in this video, I will walk you through my top five favorite new platform features in the Tokyo release. As usual, if you find this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. Starting with number five, we have translated notifications. For anyone who has tried to send multilingual notifications in ServiceNow before, you know how frustrating and difficult this has been. But in Tokyo, we have two new options for translating notifications. First, we have static translations. If we open up a notification and go into the advanced view, you'll now see the new translated notifications related list. By clicking new, we can manually add a static notification message and associate it with the language. Second, we can also enable dynamic translations under the What Will It Contain tab. Once configured, it enables us to utilize an external translation API for notifications where a static translation hasn't been created. To use translated notifications, you will need to enable these plugins and create the system properties. Number four, we have some new features for App Engine. For those who are not familiar, App Engine is a low code development tool for creating workflow applications very quickly. In Tokyo, when we go into the table and form builder, we now have a new tab for adding and managing our flows. This makes it super easy to define your data, experience, and logic all from a single screen. Also, for those who are familiar with Excel, we have a new formula builder where we can use predefined functions to calculate the value of the column without having to write a script. In the San Diego release, we saw the addition of template authoring. But now, in Tokyo, we are able to also share our templates with any user or group in the system. Next, under Logic and Automation, we have a new email notification builder where we can create event-based emails that we can also trigger from our flows. And finally, we have the new App Engine Management Center, which is a brand new app available from the ServiceNow store that provides admins with a central hub to see all of their deployed apps, if they're being used, request for dev access, and where the apps are in their pipeline between environments. Number three we have some new enhancements to the UI Builder. In Tokyo, there have been a number of new components added, and we'll be taking a look at just a few of them. Starting with a new Condition Builder. This component has a ton of configuration options, and you can even predefine a query or exclude any fields that you'd prefer not to show. Similarly, the Condition Builder has now also been added to the list component. Next, we have a new form component, which adds user presence, so we can know if anyone else is looking or editing that same record. And finally, we have an update to the tabs component, where we can now conditionally display tabs as well as adjust the orientation of the tabs. And at number two, we have some exciting new features for Service Portal. First, we can now display the language picker for unauthenticated guest users. And similarly, if we manually want to set the language, we can now pass in a language to the URL via the lang parameter. Also, in the ServiceNow store, we have a new sitemap generator plugin available to help with SEO and getting all your portal pages indexed by search engines. And finally, we have a couple of smaller updates. The tiny MCE WYSIWYG editor has been upgraded to the latest version. The Service Portal dashboard has been deprecated and now replaced by user experience analytics. And finally, Employee Center is now the default portal for new instances. And finally, at number one. This is something we have all waited a really long time for and that is an upgrade to ServiceNow's server-side JavaScript engine. The current version is based on ECMAScript 5, 
But now in Tokyo, ServiceNow has released ExmaScript 2021, which encompasses the feature rollup of ES6 through ES12. It is currently only available for scoped applications, so you can't use this in global yet. If we open up an application record, you will now see a new JavaScript mode field, and here we can set it to ECMAScript 2021. With ECMAScript 2021, we now have access to a ton of new features and keywords such as let, const, as well as support for arrow functions, temperate literals, destructuring, and map objects. Since this changes how JavaScript is interpreted by the system, if you do this to an existing application, it is highly recommended that you do some additional testing to make sure everything is working correctly. And there you have it. I know there's a lot more to the Tokyo release than what I was able to cover in this video, but if there's a particular feature you're really excited about, or if you feel there's one I should have included, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'm Nathan Firth, and thanks for watching.